Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Seller 13 Films Chips, Dips, Films, and Scripts. My name is Glenn Spillman. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the show. We have a good topic tonight. <clears throat> As you can see on the, uh, the heading there of the topic, it's uh, dealing with um, some shenanigans casting director. So we're going to get into that in a minute. This is actually one of the um, questions that um, one of the viewers has asked me to talk about. So we will be talking about that. Guru, welcome to the show. Um, a lot of exciting things have been going on <clears throat> for Seller 13 Films. Um, I will make a... Um, <clears throat> An announcement here in a few minutes when a few more people um, get online. Mark Hoffman, welcome to the show, brother. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, speaking of Mark Hoffman, um, we are um, working with Mark Hoffman and um, we are doing a film called The Elevator. And um, so it's an exciting um, venture that we are going to do. We are um, tightening up some locations and with the um, shooting that happens... But last week, yeah, last week, um, there are some things that, you know, uh, a, a couple of the locations got locked down and it was kind of beyond our control. So um, we, uh, we're we going to be uh, continuing that and I will keep everybody updated on that. So, hey, man, Elizabeth Wittenberry, welcome to the show. Lynn Seal Gibson, a.k.a. the Southern Horror Queen. Um she is on every Tuesday. Now, for those of you watching now, I forgot to mention in the beginning, you're watching us not only on Facebook Live, but on the Edge Radio over here. And uh, we are on YouTube TV. And Lynn has a show every Tuesday night called The Southern Horror Queen. This past Tuesday, she talked about the Myrtle Plantation. So if you go on the Edge Radio, um, the um, YouTube channel, or just go on Facebook, uh, the Edge Radio, um, you will see the link on that. Um, also, Johnny Blender every Wednesday has whiskey, cars, and cigars, and Cuevas. Welcome to the show. Um, Quentin, Grizzly Bear Harris. Welcome to the show, brother. Quentin was doing some behind... Well, he was doing two things last night. <clears throat> we, um, Seller 13 Films, started principal photography on the new TV show that we are doing... It's called Through the Eyes of the Tiger with Tony the Tiger Lopez. It is a, um, a new twist and take. Now, Tony is a bell bondsman, and he's also a bounty hunter. So, um, it is a new show on bounty hunting, but we take a new twist to that. We, it's not going to be just chasing you know, um, people and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to be like Dog the Bounty Hunter or anything like that. We are actually going to dive into <clears throat> the personal aspects. Who's Tony the Tiger? Who's Paul Munoz? Who's Charles? Who's all these guys that are on the team? We're going <clears> to <throat> show you um, what they do in the community. We're going to show you um, just bits and pieces of their life. Again, a twist on the show. Um, Ray, welcome to the show. Matthew Tomazic, welcome to the show, brother. Um, now, last night, uh, Matthew, well, he's the DP for this show, um, we were filming Tony <clears throat> working out at the uh, gym downtown, and uh, we did an interview with him, and we just did uh, a really some really cool B-roll. And uh, we had a chance to go cover Charles um, in Hayward this weekend, but we were already booked. We are covering, uh, we are doing a mini documentary um, on um, Ben Davis, MMA fighter heavyweight. And uh, we're doing a mini doc on him uh, at night. We are filming his fight. He'll probably go on 9.30 at night. Um, so we're going to be filming not only of, of, of him, you know, <clears throat> warming up, doing new things. We're going to interview him. We're going to run through the whole thing. We're going to film the fight. We're going to do the after. We're going to do the whole thing. <clears throat> Quite exciting. And uh, 
So Matthew Tomazic is a DP on that. Um, we are doing a lot of things. So it is exciting times for Seller 13 Films and we are just, um, Steve Verbano, welcome to the show, brother. The fundraiser that we have on Indiegogo is just stepping up. I mean, we've got um, five backers right now. Um, we've raised $500 uh, towards that. Um, and we just keep getting backers every single day throughout the day. So thank you, everybody, that has um, uh, tuned into that. Matthew got a really good footage last night. I'll post some behind-the-scenes photos like I did one last night, but um, we have a, uh, a private page where we're going to post all the dailies. Austin Jansma. Um, anyway, I got sidetracked. Quentin Tar Tarantino. Quentin Harris. Um, so he did a lot of behind-the-scenes pictures last night with uh, the um, Through the Eyes of the Tiger, and then he was on a PA and did some behind-the-scenes stuff. On a film I'm in, a short film, with Austin Jansma. Um, uh, he's got those piercing baby blue eyes. It's a running joke. It, it's an inside joke. Um, so it's called Serial Who. Um, I won't tell you too much about the film because I, um, I want you guys to uh, come out and see it when it's done. Um, it's actually a, a student senior project at Sac State. Uh, but anyway... Judging by the name, who do you think I play? That's all I'm going to say. Uh, we have a lot of fun on set, man. I mean, Austin and I, we cutting up. Um, if you guys watch the behind-the-scenes stuff that Quentin was filming last night, 10, 15 minutes of one of the scenes we were running through, you will see, you know, we were just showing you some of the, the things <clears throat> that was going on. But um, that is going to be a show probably for a month or so. Uh, I will be talking about that, but tonight's show, we're talking about what do you do, not for a Klondike bar, but what do you do when um, a casting director pulls some shenanigans. Now, this question came from um, <clears throat> Barnaby Falls, and I'm going to read you his statement to me, and it's word for word. Because he wanted me to talk about this on the show. And I've told you guys, if there is a subject matter that you would like for me to talk about, DM me on Facebook, email me, seller13films.com. Um, I, actually, I will write that in right now. <clears throat> Boom. Go to that website right there. And... Um, you can uh, ask, say, hey, I want you, you can ask me a question, a subject matter you want me to talk about, and I will talk about it on the next show. Uh, one more thing, these t-shirts right here, custom Seller 13 uh, t-shirts, you can go on Etsy, type in Seller 13, and you can pick up one of these bad boys. Now, here is the story that Barnaby wanted me to talk about. Here it is. Um... Film, acting, etc. concerning that. So, this, this happened to him. This actually happened. So, he responded to a Backstage.com ad for a photo shoot and was offered the job through Backstage.com. Uh, their email system. Pretty good pay as well. Two hours after the email was sent, he followed the directions in the email and responded both through Backstage and via personal email. Basically, he accepted the job, okay? So, he accepted the job, they offered him the job, okay? So, he got the job. Supposedly. Larry Shade, welcome to the show. Now, I was offered a job and I accepted. I didn't hear back from them and the job date was getting close, so I sent another email the day before the shoot and almost immediately got... We regret to inform you that all the roles are filled, end quote. I find this in general to be really bad practice because my guess is that they never would have informed me I had not, um, if he would not have emailed them, they never would have told him, hey, sorry, brother, freaking role is filled. So he would have shown up and they would have been like, mm, don't know what to tell you. So, <clears throat> 
He says, it's not necessarily a scam because they responded to me and didn't collect my information. Their website looks pretty legit as well. Now, in all fairness, I guess they have an out because in the original offer, there is a sentence that says, and I quote, kindly take note of a possible replacement for late contact, end quote. Well, I responded to the job offer two hours after the email. Two hours, not two days, not two weeks, two hours, okay? Barnaby's watching. Welcome to the show, brother. Chime in anytime you want. Um, but I suppose they can say if you would have responded just one minute earlier, then dot, dot, dot. So to analyze, what if, so this was a direct statement from Barnaby. What I read is from Barnaby Falls. This happened to him, okay? Now, I have heard a lot of things about Backstage.com. A lot of them in the gray area, and this is one of them. <clears throat> um, so, what happens if Barnaby blocked off a shoot for that day that they offered? He accepted and refused work somewhere else um, because it's a first come first serve policy? Or what if the talent started accepting job offers with a kindly take note of a possible replacement for late contact? So let's stop right there. Time out. <clears throat> he got the job offer. He responded within two hours, 120 minutes. And they're like, yeah, you're golden. You're cool. You're fine. And then nothing, 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 nothing. So then he's like, man, I better email these guys and see what's up. The shooting date's getting close. And they said, sorry, brother, all roles are taken. That's kind of a douche move, if you ask me, <clears throat> my personal opinion. Do you guys agree, yes or no? Um, no statements on that thus far. So, he also goes on to say, looking at it this way seems unfair, doesn't it? I totally understand how difficult it is to coordinate so many people and I've been on projects that have spiraled down, but they stayed in contact and let me know right away. Hey, it happens. I still work with them. It's a tough business sometimes, and the unexpected often happens. In the above described case, I find it to be misleading to treat what appeared to be a callback as a job offer with a date. And if you didn't make the cut, then... Was it just a callback? No problem. But it was a job offer, not a callback, an offer um, that I reserved for them, the production. So um, he's not inspired to accept anything else from Backstage.com um, in the future. It, and then he goes, is this worthy of a complaint? And then he goes on. And, so he's considering making a complaint to the FTC. Now. After all of that long soliloquy, allow me to retort. Alan Karn says, yes, it's messed up, period. Matthew Tomazic says, seems bogus that they didn't contact him to inform him that he had been replaced. Let me explain something to you guys. <clears throat> as the owner of Seller 13 Film, as an actor, as a director, as a writer, okay? I am in the process of filming a Raven's Cry. I've got three more scenes left. Now, there was a kid that I cast. His name is Blake Borders. This knucklehead went out on a skateboard one day, fell off, <laughs> broke his hip. He had to get a screw in it. His mom called, hey, I'm sorry. He's going to be out eight weeks. We totally understand if you replace him. And there's his mom right there. Welcome to the show. And I said, absolutely not. I cast him for the role. I want him for the role. He's going to have the role. I put production of a Raven's Cry off. 
for two months. Now there are some there were some scenes that Blake was not in that I filmed, but I what did I do? I called everybody. Hey, Blake got hurt. We're gonna have to push off um, production um, because Blake was riding a skateboard and broke his hip. And God forbid, today, Blake got his permit. So now he's going from skateboard to a freaking 2,500, 3,500 pound car. Oh, and I'm in the pots of the I bless everybody out there on the freeway. Good Lord. He's my movie son. And, um, and Austin says, oh, we'll get to that in a second. So I put it on hold, but I called everybody. I, I called them personally. I emailed them, I Facebooked them, and I called them. I said, hey, everybody, we got to put everything on hold for eight weeks. Blake got hurt. Everyone was like, fine. We'll just, uh, we'll just schedule in the future. Now, it did mess up everyone else's schedule because, well, now this person had this over here. They had that time blocked off, but we worked around it. It's called communication, okay? So, I kept in contact with Blake. I didn't diss Blake. I, his, I called his mom. She called me. She um, uh, texted me. Hey, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Is everything okay? Yes, everything's okay. Um, <clears throat> because when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to replace somebody because they broke their hip on a skateboard. Now, if he would have been drunk or high and just being stupid and did it, that would have been a different story. Then I would have told his mom, well, come on now. What do you expect me to do? But I probably would have still, you know, he's a kid. Kids make mistakes. <clears throat> when I have um, casting calls, people constantly, did I get it, did I get it, did I get it? I say, I will call you if you get it. So everyone that has a role in Skin Deep, I personally called them on the phone. I didn't email them, I called them. Um, and I offered them the position. Now I'm not going to go and, well, you know... You know, because Skin Deep is going to be pushed off a few months because one of the prime locations that I want is absolutely 100% equivocally essential for the movie. <clears throat> I'll just tell you where it is, Preston Castle. And Preston Castle is, um, they got some things that, that they're doing and um, I can't get in there to film, you know, but... There is a rock band going in there uh, that filmed a music video, so now they have a padded room. Perfect for me. But you know what I did? <clears throat> I put stuff up on Facebook. Hey, everybody, we're still working on some stuff. Uh, it's going to be pushback. It's communication. Um, when I had to stop um, filming for the elevator this weekend, there were a few key elements that didn't happen. And again, with the shooting last week and all that, and it's a federal freaking building that we're going into. Uh, things had to stop, but I let everybody know. I called them personally on the phone. So I say all of that to say this. Backstage.com. They have ads all over the internet. Okay? I don't. They do all these things. <clears throat> I don't even know how my casting call got up there. When I cast for Skin Deep, but I'm getting emails like 20 a day. Well, and they give me a list of actors from Backstage.com. Now, recently in the past few days since I've found out about this um, thing with Barnaby Falls, I've been talking to fellow actors. Hey, have you used Backstage.com? And they said, yes, let me tell you a story. So they told me a story. Austin says, but I don't think Backstage.com should be liable for whoever posted the casting call just that production. Now, Austin has a point there. There is, I guarantee you, that every actor that is watching this broadcast right now, on YouTube TV and on Facebook Live, I bet dollars to donuts that all of you guys belong to SACCasting.com. Is that safe to say? <clears throat> I belong to SACCasting.com as a director, 
and as an actor. But I've had a couple of things on satcasting.com that were a bit shenanigan, but it was the production company, not satcasting.com. So Austin has a point. Satcasting.com is a vehicle for people to put up casting calls. They do go in, they read it, they prove it, and it goes up there. They have no say when the casting call is, where it's at, or anything like that. So, that will allow me to ask Barnaby a question. Was it Backstage.com a production that they, something from them, or was it someone that posted on there? If that's the case, then, Mr. Barnaby Falls, I want you to get me the name of um, said company. I will call them. And I will ask them questions. And I will put them on the spot. Uh, Steve Urbano says, yep, set casting and Tony Stanwitz. Hey, I'll tell you something about Tony Stanwitz. He never has anything on his freaking site. Man, I go there all the time and there's no open roles. Well, let, let me back up a little bit. He doesn't have anything that when I go up there that is listed. Not saying that he doesn't, but satcasting.com's got a shite ton of stuff. I mean, they're, they're the same freaking thing. Um, but uh, <clears throat> now, Barnaby says, I've had success with Backstage.com, but the production company that offered me the job pulled out at the last second, and that's my beef. Okay, that is a legitimate beef. So, Barnaby, um, I want you to... DM me that production company's phone number or email, and I will tell them the story, and I'll say, hey, I'm coming at you as a journalist, and I just want to ask you a question. Why did that happen? Was there maybe a lost email? Was there a break in community? Well, I'm not going to give them leading questions that they could be, oh, yeah, that's it. Um, Dennis Goxiola, welcome, brother. Um, why, why was there a break in the communication? And I will listen to what they have to say. And if they email me, I will print it out. And I will read it directly. Because if you email me, that's public record. I can freaking use it. Um, Steve Urbano says, yeah, Tony never has much. But that's how I booked the show on ID. Hey, yeah, man. Try. I mean, it's a crapshoot. Um, oh, one more thing. Um, I don't know if you guys saw on Facebook earlier. But see this poster right here? The Choice. Well, that film is going to be showing in Tehran, Iran, next month um, um, at an international film festival. So uh, I got the email this morning. That's pretty freaking exciting. Um, <clears throat> but I suggest when you guys... Now, now, we learned this lesson when there were some casting uh, issues with theater people a few weeks back. So, I told you guys, and it was told to me, read the damn website. Look at the frequently asked questions. Look at reviews that people put on there. Yeah, backstage, boom, boom, boom. Look at reviews, okay? Um, <clears throat> because uh, people, I, I'm, a, I'm an open book. You guys can get a hold of me. You go to my website, seller13films.com, my phone number's right there. You want to call me? Call me. If I don't answer, leave a freaking message. You guys know me on Facebook, on the page, direct message me, Facebook me. There's this cat that's going to, hey, well, Kevin, if you're watching the show, don't text me at 7, my bad, 7.30. And uh, Kevin Carscallon, if I say your name right, I apologize if I didn't. So um, he got, he's been talking to me on Facebook. I told him to direct message me. I'll talk to him after the show. I didn't have time to talk to him right then. But I will. Um, I'm very, I'm highly accessible to anybody. Um, so if people have a beef with me, call me. We'll meet at Starbucks. We'll discuss it. If you got a question, I'll answer it. Um, so, um, read <coughs> reviews about, ask other actors. Go on freaking um, Seller 13 Films Community, go on SAC Actors, uh, go on 
um, any of the, the local Bay Area, Northern California um, uh, Facebook pages and say, hey, does anybody know about Backstage.com? What kind of, of um, experience do you have with them? And what do you know? You're going to get good, you're going to get bad, you're going to get all kinds. Then you have all that information and you have an informed decision. Plain and simple. Larry Shedd says, I like the hat. Thanks, brother. I'm going to have some made. Um, and this t-shirt, too. I'm going to have some of these made. They're 25 bucks a piece. Um, the t-shirts are also... They're 20 If you get them from me, if you go on Etsy, it's 25 because it's $5 shipping. And if you guys get one of these t-shirts and you take a selfie with you wearing it, <clears throat> I'm going to put that up on Facebook. And um, I don't have it on me around here. But... I'm going to start giving away prizes to people that take selfies wherever that were in the Seller 13 stuff. Um, so it's going to be a fun little game. It's going to be a little knick-knack stuff, you know. Um, crap, I had a really cool... Ah, okay. I got this thing for all you Star Trek lovers, okay. Um, it's a limited edition. It's a... Um, Locutus? I don't know. Anyway, it's one of these bad boys. You know, it's, it's a little knick-knack. It's a little collectible. You know, I'm going to be giving away stuff like this. And um, <clears throat> I got some other Star Trek stuff that I'm going to be giving away. And just little movie knick-knacks that I have. I, I have an original reel from... I have these little three-minute reels. Original um, trailer reels from um, movie companies that um, I'm getting to, to give away as prizes. So just little fun things to have, you know. Um... Oh, Steve Urbano says, uh, big Star Trek fan, that's a Borg. Okay. Whatever you say, Borg. Um, Austin says, getting spotty service, I have to head out now. I'll talk to you later. See you later, brother. Take care of those baby blues, man. I love you. Oh, and thanks for the coffee last night. Um, all right. I think we've covered the... Um, the whole aspect of what to do when these shenanigans happen. Um, normally, I do an hour show. I'm thinking about just doing 30 minutes, guys. Just let me know what you think. Because I know an hour is a long time to sit through. Um, or even to watch if you watch it on YouTube or anything else. So, um, leave comments on this afterwards. If you think I should just leave it at 30, say 30 minutes. If you want to see an hour, let me know. But I hope that I've covered this enough for you. And again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please, um, seller13films.com, email me. Seller13films community, direct message me, leave a message, whatever. Um, we've got uh, Through the Eyes of the Tiger, our new TV show that we're doing with Tony the Tiger Lopez. We've got the mini documentary that we're doing uh, when, uh, this weekend on Ben Davis, big freaking heavyweight guy. No one's been able to last 30 seconds with him. So, um, and if anyone wants to come on the show and talk about anything, film, theater, arts, whatever, let me know and I will get you right here in studio and we will make it happen. But um, I appreciate everybody for tuning in. We've got about one minute, so if anyone has a quick question, uh, before we sign off, uh, go ahead and ask, and I will answer it. Um, if anyone wants to post anything on the page, whether it's an audition um, or anything like that, and again, I'm offering my services to you guys. If you guys want to do um, live uh, video video auditions, I'll do that for you. If you want to Facebook Live me, you know, 15, 30 minutes one night, and I and, and you want me to read the script with you. You want to do a read? I will do that with you guys too. We are here to help, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've got a, 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 some new people I'm bringing on board. Pretty exciting. Matthew Tomazic, um, my new DP, and uh, so and he's also um, you know uh, many other things. But it's going to be exciting, and we just uh, uh, picked up a few other people. I'll talk about that on next show. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Again, let me know on here if you want me to stick to an hour or if you just think 30 minutes is good. I've got zero problem with that. We can cover a subject matter 
really good in that amount of time. Thank you guys very much. Have a good evening. Peace out.